Welcome to this edition of Your Ticket to Baseball Nostalgia. This is Dan Busby, baseball ticket collector, researcher, and author. My first baseball book was entitled Before and After Babe Ruth, a story of the New York Yankees as told through the lens of tickets and passes. In this edition of Your Ticket to Baseball Nostalgia, we're covering the 1953 World Series in which the Brooklyn Dodgers faced the New York Yankees. This is all based on my book, before and after Jackie Robinson, a story of the Brooklyn National League team as told through the lens of tickets and passes. Today, I'm sitting in a couple of seats that were used at Wrigley Field decades ago. The pundits gave Brooklyn the edge in power and the Yankees in starting pitching for the 1953 World Series. The edge in power definitely made sense. The Dodgers in 1953 hit more home runs than any Yankee team ever had. The two teams respected each other. Each knew what the other was capable of doing, each confident in its own abilities. In the first inning of Game 1 of the World Series at Yankee Stadium, the Yankees knocked out Carl Erskine, the Dodgers' ace, and scored four runs. Carl gave up three walks and two triples, one with the bases loaded by Billy Martin. He gave way to reliever Jim Hughes. Allie Reynolds started for the Yankees and pitched in the sixth. He knocked Roy Campanella down and bruised Roy's hand so badly that Campy looked like a vague caricature of himself up at the plate. Johnny Sane relieved Reynolds and became the winning pitcher in a 9-5 to game. The Dodgers had three home runs in the game by Gilliam, Hodges, and Shuba. The Dodgers protested a play at third base in the seventh inning. Billy Cox bunted, a good bunt, too, as everyone conceded. Yogi Berra dashed out from behind the plate, missed one stab at the ball, and then picked it up. Everybody in the ballpark thought it was too late for a play at third, except Yogi and, as it turned out, umpire Art Gore. Gore had his arm in the air, signaling an out, before either the ball reached Gil McDougal or Hodges reached third base. In the coaching box, Tommy Holmes, writing for the Brooklyn Eagles, said, Chuck Dressen broke the world's record for the standing high jump in a baseball uniform. One Dodger player said, Barra threw to third base because he saw Gore call Hodges out. In Game 2 at Yankee Stadium, Preacher Rowe and Eddie Lopat pitched complete games. The Dodger had it won until Billy Martin tied the game with a homer in the seventh and Mickey Mantle hit a two-run homer in the eighth. The Yankees won 4-2 and now led the series two games to none. Manager Charlie Dressen again handed the ball to Carl Erskine for Game 3, played at Ebbets Field. Erskine would set a World Series strikeout record with 14 in chilly sunshine. He struck out Johnny Mize for the last out of the game. It was a tight game as Vic Rashi took the loss. Robinson was the power behind the first two runs. Campanella homered in the last of the eighth for the winning run. The Dodgers won 3-2. to two. The series now stood Yankees 2 and Dodgers 1. The Dodgers scored early off Whitey Ford in Game 4. Duke Snyder drove in four runs with two doubles and a homer. Unpredictable Billy Lowe's went eight innings and was relieved by Labine in the ninth as the Dodgers won 7-3. to three. Now the series was deadlocked at 2-2. Two and two. Johnny Padres took the mound for Game 5. The Yankees rocked him for six runs in the first three innings. But this was 1953, not Game 7 of the 1955 World Series when Padres finished off the Yankees. Game 5 was almost a total rout, 10-2 to two before the Dodgers scored 5 in the late innings to bring the score to 11-7. The Yankees hit four home runs, Mantle, McDougal, Martin, and Woodling. The Yankees now led the series three games to two. In game six at Yankee Stadium, the Dodgers were trailing three to one in the top of the ninth. Ferrillo came to the plate with one man on base facing Allie Reynolds. He hit a home run that created a 3-3 tie and gave the Dodgers a moment of hope. In the bottom of the ninth, Billy Martin slammed one of Clem Labine's good sinkers on a low line up the middle for a single. Gil McDougal had rounded third and was nearly home. Snyder stuffed the ball into his hip pocket and ran from the field, his head bobbing. Long afterward, he thought, 
I should have thrown. Suppose McDougal had fallen down. The Yankees won 4-3 to three and the series four games to two. Even though the Dodgers lost the 1953 World Series, one of baseball's finest ball clubs had blossomed. It began in 1941 when they won the first pennant for the franchise in 21 years. With the exception of the war years of 1943 to 45, the Dodgers were in the fight for the National League pennant virtually every season. With Branch Rickey's great experiment, Jackie Robinson, spearheading the charge and Pee Wee Reese in the leadership role as team captain, the Dodgers dominated the National League over the last 11 years. Even in losing, they would provide thrills and unforgettable seasons. Well, thank you for joining us for this edition of Your Ticket to Baseball Nostalgia. This video is based on my book, Before and After Jackie Robinson, a story of the Brooklyn National League team as told through the lens of tickets and passes. For more information on old baseball tickets, go to BaseballTicketMan.com. Order your copy of Before and After Babe Ruth and Before and After Jackie Robinson on Amazon. And watch for my third baseball book, Before and After Satchel Page. And a special thank you to Daniel Herman, who shot and edited this video.